Now the action gets serious. We're going to the professional fights, Rich. We have five professional fights this evening, and I'm ready to get this started. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape for our first official professional fight. Tonight, we have Joseph Angelo. He's 26 years old. He's six foot tall. He weighs in at 185 pounds. He's compiled a record of three and one. He's going up against Elijah Boley. Now, for the audience out there, take away that G. That's how you do it. He's age 30. He's six foot tall, 185 pounds, and he has a record of three and no. He is undefeated. We are ready to get the professional action started. Back to Dan. Rose of the evening. First calling from the blue corner, Elijah Boley. And the music is started for our first professional fight of the evening, Rich. A good undercard to get us on our way, a couple snafus here and there, but once again, we're getting to that next level. You've had some time to spend with this gentleman here before the show. Tell us a little bit about him, Rich. His gym is BJJ Conquest. His last two wins were via TKO. He has a strong wrestling background. Just seems like his sport of MMA, it revolves around wrestling, and I completely agree. It's, it's all, it carries over so well into the sport that, that it's easier for him to catch on to the ground game as far as the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, because it takes a lot of hips. You gotta be able to swivel your hips a certain way to be good on the ground. Yeah, the body positioning and balance is really almost unparalleled in any other sport than wrestling. The, the stance and the strength that these men it's, it's really phenomenal. I know coming from a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu style, going up against wrestlers, they continually pushed me to get better, always better, and trying to think a move or two ahead because I knew their stance and their position was so strong, I had to be perfect technically to even get a slight advantage on them. And you're not a huge fan of going against wrestlers, are you, Chuck? No, not at all. Well, just like him and a lot of other pro fighters today, they all have children. He has one daughter that he fights for and he wakes up every day and he knows that he has to support his daughter and that's what drives him. That's a really cool story. You know, there's so much more to each fight than each fighter. This fight is gonna be brought to you now, by- Now from the red corner, he represents Sargus MMA. Joey Angelo, cage side, please. One second, back at you. This, this matchup tonight is brought to you by Red Ribbon Soda. Drink Red Ribbon Soda at natronabottling.com. Any Giant Eagle Market District store is gonna carry this soda, so please check it out next time that you're in. Coming down to the ring now is Joseph Angelo. I want everyone out there to take a good look at that headband. Rich, tell us about it. Well, that headband, I don't know if anybody is aware, that was personally given to him by a legend that recently passed away, Kevin the Monster Randleman. And when I had a chance to talk to this fighter, it gave me goosebumps because I, I absolutely love the history of the sport. Kevin Randleman was, he was a legend. And he is personally friends with the daughters, with his wife, and I just think it was the coolest story just to hear that, he gave, he gave it to him personally before his pro debut, and right now he wears it everywhere. And as we all know, if you couldn't have guessed, but this fight is dedicated to Kevin the Monster Randleman, which I absolutely love. Uh, he passed away way, way too early. And man, what a warrior he was. And if he trained with Kevin Randleman, you can guarantee this guy knows how to fight. He's ready to go. His wrestling is on the mark. Kevin Randleman was a freak of nature. I have never in my life seen anyone in mixed martial arts with the athleticism superior to Kevin Randleman. This is an exciting fight. It, this is gonna be a good fight. I agree. Ladies and gentlemen, before we begin the professional portion of this, evening, this evening's event, I wanna wish Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission Chief Inspector Ron Russitano a slightly belated but happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. Russitano. 
It's time for the pro division of the Gladiators of the Cage. In our first event, it is in the Gladiators of the Cage middleweight professional division calling for three five-minute rounds. First, introducing out of the blue corner, he weighed in at 185 pounds. He stands an even six feet tall, 30 years of age, undefeated at 3-0. He is a wrestler. He fights for BJJ Conquest. He's from Kissimmee, Florida, by way of Crofton, Maryland. Elijah, rude boy, Bully. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in at 185 pounds, also standing an even six feet tall. 26 years old with a three and one record. He's a Muay Thai specialist from Sargus MMA. He's from Las Vegas by way of Brooklyn, New York. Joey Angelo. Three five minute rounds, your referee, Chip Snyder. And here we go, Chip Snyder's Sir, gonna put this underway. Here, I am just Sir, ecstatic to see what happens there. here. Yeah, very even match up in the 185 okay, pound division. So are you ready? Now you're so are you ready? Come on, let's fight. As you move up in these weight classes, this is our heaviest bout of the evening. And these guys are both put together. Tall guys, lots of power, and both come from a good pedigree of full mixed martial arts. This should be really, really entertaining. And here they are, they're just feeling each other out. Now, pros have five minutes to do whatever they have to do, and I completely I, I would do the same thing if I had a chance to go in with five minutes. I would feel myself out and I'd burn myself out just to see what the opponent's going to do because he would be able to easier to easier to read in the later rounds. Well, good exchange of kicks there. Tit for tat. Once again, like you said, feeling each other out, checking spacing and distance and trying oh, to get a Superman punch. Time. Trying to get a little you bit good? of edge good? Hey. as far as positioning. Bring him. Let's go. Come on. Now, once again, this is all in. There are no shin pads. Ground and pound to the head is legal. High kicks, kicks to the head are perfectly legal. This is 100% MMA, just like you're gonna see in the UFC. All those same maneuvers are legal. Now, Joseph Angelo, he's coming off of three wins and two of them were by submission. So if he goes to the ground, there's a good chance that he could finish it and he could finish it fast. Now, Elijah Rude Boy, Bully, He's coming off a two TKO victory, so I'm looking to see him stand with this one. Still filling it out. A good job cutting off the cage by Elijah. Well, interesting fact about Joseph Angelo's corner. One of his head coaches at Zargas MMA is actually from Pittsburgh and went out to Vegas, and now he trains with Joseph Angelo. Now, was he training at Extreme you Couture also? Time, I believe so. Yeah. I believe so. I could right be wrong, but I, I believe he was. That's Joseph here. Angelo, as we're speaking of. Stay right here, yes. here for me, I know. You, that's the now, first Rich, I know yes you talked no. to Elijah, Listen. and the last name he it, it pronounces Bully. 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 Take the G off. Point, okay? that's, that's what he told me. I, was, I said, good bully. He says, just take the G off. I said, <laughs> okay, I can take the G off. I knew you was talking to him about that. That's why I was kind of laughing about that. But no, this is a really even match. Once again, we saw a light kick there. The referee doing the right thing, giving recovery time. It was a little bit below the belt. Both guys are game. Doesn't look like either one's affected. Well, that just goes to show his sportsmanship. And it, we just continue to see it over and over again in this show. And that's what I love. Well, the stakes are much higher once we get to the professional level. You have way less margin of error. We're about two minutes into this round, and you can see there's still a really good feeling out process. Neither guy has truly committed to anything. They're staying at end's reach of their punches and kicks, and they're trying to set up their next move. This isn't checkers, Rich. This is chess. They're playing a different game here. And once again, the stakes are higher. The punches are coming in harder and more accurate. The kicks are being thrown much more lethal. So the feeling out process is going on, but I think here real soon we're going to start to see the pace pick up. They're closing distance, and the cage is being cut off well. Now, now to the feeling out process, do you think it is because they're just nice. feeling each other out, or, Good or is it just showing respect? Well, I think it's a combination of both. You know, one, I, you get to this level, you realize in one error, the other guy's so accomplished, he can capitalize very well. Good exchange of kicks. I like that the pace is picking back up a little bit, and I like the movement. Both men are moving around very well. They're not standing there stationary. As you've seen maybe a little more in our earlier fights, you see more feigning, more head movement, and a little bit better footwork here on the professional level, and that's what everyone's working towards. Bully, he seems, he seems like he's getting a little more aggressive. He's starting to close the distance a little bit, as you can see. And 
Now we're we're three minutes in right now, and they're still throwing each other out. Now it goes against the cage. And there's a, this is an art in itself. A lot of people that may have never trained before, it takes a ton of energy, but cage control is so important. Keeping your opponents back up against that cage is a very, very big advantage, but it also takes a lot of energy, Rich. How important do you think it is that a gym has their own cage when it comes to training for a cage fight? It's, cage match? It's, it's absolutely a necessity, even if it's some homemade version of chain link fence, you know, concreted and blocked or, or, you know, bolted to the floor. You need to train off the fence. If you don't, you will, just the feeling the first time being put up against the cage, it's not a fun feeling to be pushed up against that cage. It's not no, forgiving. No, you, you leave practice from going against a cage and your back is scratched up. And here we go, he's quick some quick flurry. exchanges. Quick flurry. Bole is pushing the fight forward more. It looks like, it looks like Joseph is working more of a counter. He, he wants to work against that cage and kind of use it as a spring. Yeah, and you can, it can be your greatest offense, your greatest defense. It can be used as a weapon. It, the cage is your, it's your tag team partner per se in the ring, Rich. Yeah, it, you're, you're absolutely right. It could be your disadvantage as well. Oh, now, ooh, nice. Jumping kick, not a lot on it, but it's definitely keep Bole back. Bole's been doing a good job here towards the last minute and a half, two minutes of this round of starting to dictate the pace of the fight. Cage control is very, very important. And you notice Angelo keeps getting closer and closer to that cage, Rich. Oh, nice, nice snap kick. Looks like Bole's setting something up here. Oh, we got 10 Short seconds time, left. We're gonna see if we're gonna close it with a flurry. There's, there's sort of a lot of different combinations here. I mean, not necessarily combinations, but different kicks, different punches. So if you're going to put yourself in the judge's seat after that first round, who do you give the slight edge to, Rich? I would honestly give it to Bully because I believe he kind of walked, he pushed forward a little bit more. And Joseph, now on his defense, he could be just a counter puncher, which is, which is completely okay because everybody's a counter puncher. Like we mentioned earlier, Chuck Liddell, he's a counter puncher. He did very well with it. But I'm, I'm going to give it to Elijah just because he pushed the pace a little bit. Yeah. Cage control and picking, a, picking it apart. He's doing a very good job as the closing rounds, closing minutes of the first round come to a, a head. One, if Ronnie. I'm looking at this from a coach yeah, perspective, I'm going to tell Bully, you're doing a good job. You're starting to track down your opponent. If I'm talking to Angela, do not let your opponent close you back like that. Use your angles more. But also, you got to start working a jab or a front kick. You got to keep that opponent from pushing you straight back. Do back you up, think this fight is going to go to the ground at some point? Because the way it looks Real. right now, that they're just back both up. of them are content sure. with standing. We've seen that a lot tonight. It's okay, very interesting back to up, me please. that really we haven't seen really on, any fight. groundwork per se to speak of a no, little just bit. Just the amateurs in and, that first and, fight. Yeah, just the amateurs, and they got in trouble for for striking to the head on the ground. Yeah. Yeah, both of those, that's where it kind of got into muddy water. But we oh, Here we go. They're starting to pick up a little nice. bit. Nice combination by Joseph. And now notice, Angelo's pushing the cage back. His corner must have told him, you got to get after it. Yeah, absolutely. They said, look, you're down on points. What are you doing? Get in there and fight. And it seems like he put it into a whole other gear now. It, he, he, they could have reminded him, this is for this is for Kevin Randleman. you got to do what you got to do and fight like the monster because we all know he was an explosive fighter. Got it. Yeah, I think he's got to work that jab. Flick that jab out there, keep his opponent from backing him away because he's, Bully's doing a great job of cutting off the cage. Look at, we mean cutting off the cage. Look at the distance behind Angelo and his back. And that's the place where he wants to get him. And you can see he's clinching. Good job by Angelo to firefight out of there and get back. When you pin a guy in the corner, he has to fight his way out. Right, Rich? Angelo, he really, really likes throwing that Superman punch and he follows it up afterwards and that's great. He is coming up, he's throwing a little more combinations. Now we just gotta have him working more often. Nice snap kick there. Angelo's keeping him back. I think his corner said, look, don't let him bully you around. And Boule is doing just that. But Angelo's doing a good job in the second round, readjusting his game plan, saying, no, I can't let this happen. Now there we, we go, it could go to the ground. They're against the cage. Good cage control. Once again, a lot of energy being spent. Nope, Bole, good job with head control. Joseph his working, head. working an underhook. Get your hands out there, Fred. And he has an overhook, as you can see, with his right arm. Now he has to work that underhook with his left arm. There you go. He turned. Nice turn, job turning against the cage. Nice way to get back out. They circle again, and mutually they go to the center of the cage. They want to start this back there and start engaging with some more strikes, it looks like. Still a little bit, a little bit slow. I know the action is oh. going to pick up. These guys are both professionals. It's a very, They're going to get after kick. it, and they both want to win. 
Well, you've seen how quickly things changed in the Rubiano fight. Massey was really seeming to dictate the pace of the fight. Nice Superman punch. And now you're starting to see the same thing happen here. The little more aggressiveness coming from Angelo, but at any second, this fight could end. Remember, those are four ounce gloves. Man, that, does, that doesn't feel good. No, it doesn't. They're still, they're still mixing in a little bit. Good job mixing up the straight with the low kick. Now, I, I like that they're standing. Like, we don't really get to see too many matches that are just pure striking matches. And this is, I believe this is, they're pretty evenly matched. Well, I mean, they're both six foot tall. It, it's kind of mind boggling to me, though. You look at Joseph Angelo, a man so close with Kevin Randleman, and training a high level of wrestling. And not in one instance did he look for even a shot, a clinch. It was just a defensive clinch when he was pushed up against the cage. I'm, I'm very, very surprised by that. He's coming with, with some nice combinations. This is a real tough round to judge right now. Just by the just by the combinations, I'm going to have to lean towards Joseph at this moment. Well, once again, Bolet also, though, is a, a accomplished Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner. So there may be some hesitation for Angelo to take that to the ground. When you're fighting a jiu-jitsu guy who's six foot tall, once you get into guys six foot and above, Rich, you know that's a whole different game trying to defend the arm bars and the triangle chokes. Yeah, especially as a, as a wrestler. You right. don't want to go to the ground all that often with a, a BJJ specialist if you're a wrestler. Another heavy punch thrown by Bole, but just kind of swiped out of there was Angelo, but pushing the pace again. If I'm looking at this fight as dictating the pace, it seems that Bole's really captivated this round once again by doing this. Yeah, and he's and he's winning over the round. Like the first now, time. it's easy to sway it. Now we don't know what the judges are thinking. We don't know what they're seeing. They have a great view in there. They're they are cage side and they can see different angles than we can. Well, the first ten seconds, Angelo just charged. It looked like it was going to be a whole different fight come the second. But I think he was just letting his dominance know that you're not going to push me around. But it kind of slipped here in the last three three and a half minutes. Well, they doing a good job of pushing the pace, cutting down the angles, not landing anything super solid. A good job by Angelo countering. I'd like to see him engage more, Rich, though. I, I do. I would like to see him throw that lead leg kick and, and follow it up with a straight left. That's what I would like to see because I think it's open. Here we go. Oh, Bole, oh nice straight, straight left. left. Beautiful, beautiful con contact there. Here we go. Now it's closing in. We got the last 20 seconds of the round. And the pace is starting to pick up a little bit. They're against the cage. Now watch. Now, Short time, now gentlemen. Elijah has two underhooks. That's a very dangerous position to be in if you're Joseph. Yeah, definitely. But he got out of it. He got out of it nicely. Well, you can definitely tell both of them is trained against the cage. They know the severity of the positions. And now as we get later into the fights, the, the enemy of clinching your opponent's sweat comes into play. Mm. It's very, very yeah. difficult when you're in that body clinch to get the takedowns and even get a really tight submission because the body is just so slippery. So it, if you're a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu practitioner like Bole is, it, it's going to change a lot of the things that maybe your arsenal has. But for one moment here, this hasn't went to the ground. So I, I think we're going to see a lot more standing up in this third round. What do you tell each corner going into this, Rich? As a corner, what do you tell your fighter? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell them, if, especially in Joseph's corner, you have to get after it. You have to win this round because a lot of the times the judges see the last round as win or lose, and that's the way this is. And if he takes advantage of the third round and goes after it, maybe lands a takedown or even rocks Elijah, it, it's a potential to turn both those rounds into the judges eyes and just make it to their his advantage uh, well said even when you're landing more punches or strikes if you're moving backward that's what the referee that's what the judges are seeing and even the referees seeing that too they want to see you engaging action and they're going to call on that we're underway here in the third round of our first professional fight of the evening i think this is too close i think both judges told him they have to, they have to be more aggressive and they have to go after it there he is with that Superman punch again. Nice lead leg kick. Both staying active, but just that big shot, it's just not been landed yet. No, there's just a couple super couple Superman punches and there's a couple straight rights by Elijah. And that's basically the only thing that's landed with like as a significant strike. 
A lot of a lot of fainting going on, but not a lot of contact. And I'm not saying this to nice dis high kick. I'm not saying this to discredit anyone. It almost seems like a points karate sparring where they're just at the end of their punches and they're not getting the full hit on it. If they can just close in a little bit, we're going to start seeing the power unleashed. Joseph really likes throwing that lead snap kick up to the head. Yeah. I mean, he's used it. He used it three separate times, and it's. He's had a little bit of luck with it. It's made a little bit of contact, and it now doesn't. Now he has to follow up with it. Exactly. He has to follow up with it. Look, he has him against the cage. He has to take advantage of it. Nice job by Elijah to turn the corner and get him against the cage. And the if I'm Elijah, I'm working on taking him down because that could win. That could be game over. It's going to win the round. This is a pivotal round. I have not been judging this as a judge. I've just been calling the fight as I see it. So I'm not really putting a lot of weight on who's winning this fight. So that's why I always hate to speculate mm -hmm. because I'm looking at different aspects and the judges are looking different aspects. We're all watching the same fight. But it it's definitely seems that Angelo has been backing up a little more. But it seems like he has landed some really crisp strikes in return. So this could go either way. This is a must win round for both guys. A good clinch. And then they both disengage and back out to the center and say, let's get this on. They're doing really well against the cage of turning the corner and, and switching. They're doing a nice job of turning their opponent against the cage. Was Here it goes, they get the cage again. Good right hand landed by Bole, and then it led into a clinch. But once again, the sweat, you can see the precipitation, or, or, perspiration, I'm sorry. Working just for an <laughs> underhook. Really just running off these guys right now. Joseph almost got two underhooks. Now, as you can see, Elijah did a nice job. He turned his hips to the left and opened up that, went, opened up those underhooks. Went for a big elbow there as he separated and almost contacted flush, but go. it almost nice wasn't one, enough. Two. We're almost, we're up. there's two minutes left in this fight and it could go either way. It all depends on what happens in these last two minutes here. It I, could predict the fight. I agree, Rich, and I'd really like to see one of these guys step up and push the pace and make the other guy fight the pace. Oh, there it nice, is. There's a big nice left. Nice left hand. Here we go. Lead. Oh, he caught, he caught the leg through an overhand right. They're bo they both seem very, they're very technical. Very much so. Very technical. And Elijah being 3-0 and and Joseph being on a three-fight win streak, it, it's kind of like they're afraid they're afraid to lose it, you know? Well, well, they really realizes the importance of this round. He just went in and tried for the clinch and looking for a takedown, trying for a leg sweep. He's putting a lot of pressure on. It's going to be very difficult, I feel, at this point with the sweat to take Angelo down. It's a good job, but Angelo's just fighting this up. You know, one of the things, Rich, that's very interesting, and I think you can attest to this also, when you fight an opponent, who isn't as skilled sometimes, just right off the street and wants to oh, fight Oh, here we you. go, that was Good a nice little flurry. He's gotta keep that up. It's sometimes harder to fight somebody who has a lot of technique because you're thinking the same way. You're anticipating what they're doing. I think you're seeing two similar matchups on the feet. They're anticipating and maybe overthinking each other and just not engaging in this fight. Watch as much as pump, they should, Brad. probably. I agree with that. Now, as you can see, it's starting to pick up a nice. little bit more. There's a little bit more flurries going on, a little bit more combinations. I think they know that they're at their last minutes. I'm, they have to know because it's starting to pick up a little bit. Ooh. Oh, a mouthpiece came out. Solid that was a right nice, hand. Nice right hand. Nice right hand. And he caught. He he did it by catching that leg and lead with the right hand. Yep. Same thing. He went to the well one too many times. Twenty seconds oh, left. Oh, nice here double jab. In the third round of our first professional fight here of the evening at Gladiators of the Cage 20. Short time, gentlemen. Here we go. Well, I'm expecting to see a flurry here from Elijah. Here we go. Here's a nice flurry. Keep it up. Nice, 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 nice job. Nice exchange. You can see the mutual respect. Boy, I'll tell you, Rich, that's, that's going to be a close one. Hey, Once again, I'm not watching it as a judge, but if you're a fan out there, hit us up. Hashtag GOTC20. Let us know what you're thinking. Give us your call on the fight. Really close battle. Good way to start off the first night, the first fight of the professional fight. These fights are also brought to you, brought to you by Fireball Whiskey. I'm not a big drinker, Chuck, but I hear good things about it. It's very, very much 
in the judges' hands right now, Rich. I'm not sure. We're going to try to go to an instant replay here and catch some of the highlights. If you're a fan out there, let us know what you're thinking. But yeah, both fighters barely tagging each other. Good job of head movement. That's, you got to give props on both sides. Sometimes when you have a technical fighter, the fight looks a little more boring because you're not seeing those punches landed. But you got to remember, the guy's slipping the punches. Look at all these punches and very little contact on any of them. Great head movement by both men. And sometimes it makes for a little lackluster fight, but notice these guys are keeping up their hands more, more head movement. You're seeing that more in the professional fights than we saw early on in the fights in the amateur bouts, Rich. Rich, I'm going to put you on the spot. If you had to pick, and I know you're doing the same as me, who do you give the fight to? It was such a close fight, and it's hard to judge. I'm kind of leaning towards the rude boy. Boy. They seem to push the pace of the fight. I think if he wins the fight, that's going to be the reason why. Now, to all you viewers out there, if anybody didn't get a look at the headband, look at Joseph Angelo's headband. That is the exact headband that Kevin Randleman wore in Pride in the UFC. I can't stop talking about it. It just gets me, gets yeah, me a little it's excited. Really, it's yeah. really cool. And that come from one of, I think, his fights he said specifically after that fight, because yep. I know he had changed it up once in a while. He was known for giving those things. But let's go down. The judges seem to have made their decision for our official announcement from Dan Bogan. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judge Long scored at 30-27. Judge Krushka scored at 29-28, and Judge Rogers scored at 30-27. Once again, for your winner, by unanimous decision, fighting out of the red corner, Mr. Angelo. Who would you like to thank? First and foremost, uh, I took this fight on 19 days notice. My coach, Kevin Randleman, uh, sorry. Coach Randleman passed away during my, uh, during my training camp. So he gave me this. And I just want to say thank you, coach, for being in my corner. Anyone that knows MMA knows Kevin Randleman. I want to thank Coach Sargis. I want to thank Beto Jones. I want to thank my father, my Aunt Patty, my Uncle Anthony, Lexi, uh, everyone, Adrian, everyone for coming out from Brooklyn to support me. Thank you guys, I love Pittsburgh. Give me a title shot. Now I got a question for you. You guys look like you scouted each other. There was a lot of sort of a defensive battle going on there. Is that true or was that just an illusion? Uh, you know what, I like to stay kind of, I want to be limber for 185. It's my second fight at 185. I kind of want to be hard to, to time. And uh, I got to give it to Big E. He's a tough kid. He's a good wrestler, takedown defense and staying away from that straight that he caught me with was priority. Congratulations on the win, sir. Hope to have you back soon. Joseph Angelo with a really heartfelt win, you know, dedicating it to the legend, Kevin Randleman, who recently passed away at only 44 years of age. Great show, great sportsmanship. I love seeing things like that in a tough earned victory, Rich. I'm really actually happy that, I'm not happy that he won, but it is for Kevin Randleman, and I think it was a good fight to put on. It was a classy act.